41-10, Colorado with another disappointing performance, Brian. Uh, on this beat, it's starting to feel like Groundhog's Day a little bit, right? Yeah, it really is. And, uh, I mean, it's worse than even I thought. You know, um, I didn't think this team was going to be that bad this year, and uh, and they are. I mean, they're they're not a good football team. And, you know, I, I gave them a little bit of a, a puncher shot today. Uh, and, you know, 41-10 is, uh, is much more dismal than I thought it was going to be today. And it's like last year in the sense that it's not only that they're losing football games, it's just a really, really hard product to watch. Uh, JT Shrout, 79 yards passing. Colorado, 1 of 11 on third down. They were unable to convert both of their fourth down attempts. And there were opportunities out there, kind of like the first half of their opener where you look and go, they should have had two more touchdowns in the first half against TCU. And then, you know, here, early in the second half, I mean, they had a chance to make this a real football game, if not take the lead and just not able to take advantage of those. And one of those we'll get into a little bit was, I thought, a little bit on the officials as well. I thought Fontenot was in. But still, that the officials are not the reason that Colorado lost this football game today. Correct. I mean, I thought the officials made it back home. We can get into that. But uh, that could have changed some some things a little bit. But CU was handed some golden opportunities. Some of them they took. The defense gave them credit. They forced some turnovers. But you know, coming out of halftime, it's only twenty to ten, and uh, an Air Force with a horrible snap on the punt um, hands CU the ball at the thirteen yard line, and they can't score on it. And then the next drive, they start on the twenty three yard line, <laughs> they can't score on it. And then the next drive, they start on their own forty nine, they can't score on it. I mean, you you look at those opportunities. This offense was set up, you know, whether by the defense or by Air Force, many, many times today where Air Force was like, here, come back in the game. <laughs> come play with us. Yeah. You know, and CU was like, nah, we're good. You take it, you know. And, you know, and then Air Force finally was like, fine. <laughs> and they destroyed them in the, in the end. It was kind of like that TCU game in that it was a game for much of three quarters. And then, you know, at the end, Air Force is you know, kind of pulled away and it looks ugly. Uh, but that's the bust right now. I mean, you, you can't trust them to score points. And, you know, they score a touchdown in the first half. That's one first-half touchdown in the last four games, you know, on offense uh, for this team going back to last season. And so much has changed personnel-wise and things like that, but it's still the same product out there. Uh, these guys can't score. I thought coming into today, JT Schrott would start and make a few mistakes and he'd get pulled. They ended up – they kept him in for the entire game. Yeah. And uh, – I thought especially late when it got out of hand, there's no reason to bring Brennan Lewis in the game at that point. Uh, and it's hard to say how this game would have looked differently had they put Lewis in at some point. Uh, Darrell said it, hey, you know, JT Shroud hasn't played much football and they wanted to get him those reps. Uh, how much of it do you think was the weather today? Because it was pretty miserable out here, especially in the second half for a kid from California that transferred to Tennessee that, you know, is just now starting his CU playing career. Uh, that certainly played into it, but uh, you can't keep making excuses for this football team either. Yeah, it, it's excuses every week, right? And I've got to think some of it's the weather. You know, JT was wearing gloves today. You know, he wore a glove on his throwing hand. Uh, I don't know how much you know experience he's had doing that. Uh, we haven't talked to a quarterback since day one of fall camp, so uh, we didn't get a chance to talk to him today. So I have no idea. You can only speculate, though, that that was probably a new feeling for him. I mean, how much opportunity have has he had in his life to throw with a glove on his hand? Um, I don't think I've seen it before. So does that play a role? Maybe. Uh, but at the same time, the issues go beyond that. Um, I will say my feeling going into this week was, for Carl Durrell, I, th I thought he needed to give J.T. Shrout the start and give him a full game. Just give him a full game, let him work through mistakes. And I give Carl credit for that. He gave him the full game and said, work through it. And, you know, uh, it didn't work out very well. Um, and I agree with you at the end. There's no point in going to Brendan Lewis at that point. But um, they've got to get better. I mean, you know, it's it's amazing that we're two games in and Carl Durrell in his post game already mentioned, hey, Owen McCown, Drew Carter, we've got other options there too. He's already bringing up the third and fourth string guys two games into the season. And it's hard to even find glimmers of hope. I think defensively in stretches you go, okay, this isn't the, the team's biggest issue, but they still kind of roll over at times when, you know, things when, – when their backs are against the wall, and that's not a good sign. Uh, I mean – Cole Becker's been pretty good through two games. I, I would really struggle to find another unit, I guess, pass coverage, but that doesn't really count today because Air Force yeah. isn't going to throw the ball against you. 
any other glimmers of hope or reasons for optimism at this point? Well, I, I will give credit to the pass defense a little bit in that, yeah, Air Force doesn't throw the ball a lot, but that was one thing that changed the game in 2019 was the passing game. Now, that was a bright, sunny day in 2019. This is different. Uh, but they didn't allow Hazik Daniels to do anything, you know, through the air. And so I thought and, – and they did a pretty good job last week. So I'll say that maybe that – is a little bit of a glimmer of hope. Uh, we're trying to find something here, Adam. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll give them that a little bit in that they didn't let that happen. I mean, Air Force got its yards on the ground, which we knew they were going to get. But, yeah, there's not a whole lot of, you know, things you're looking for right now. You're trying to find positives. And, you know, I guess you look, there's there's young guys on this team that you look at and say, wow, that guy can play. But he's really young. So, you know, they'll grow up and maybe they grow up in this program. We'll see. But that's where the, you know, fans get discouraged. Is they see some young players and they say, yeah, but are they going to be here next year? Because of the transfer portal, and that's where this is gets this is dangerous territory for CU. Is that if this keeps going, what stops those young players from saying, "Forget this, I'm out of here"? Yeah, you don't want to become a junior college where you're giving these guys right. tape for their next stop, right? Yeah. Uh, three buffs were banged up that I counted in this game: Isaiah Lewis in the first half, Alex Fontenot didn't seem to look right after uh, he got hit on the goal line there, and then Jordan Tyson banged up as well. Carl Durrell doesn't think any of those are serious injuries. Yeah. We talked about in the preseason, they just can't afford injuries in the secondary, especially at safety. And they're going to have to start the Minnesota game without Trevor Woods, who was ejected for targeting. There are a couple things as a fan of football that just drive me nuts. One of them is when the ball is underthrown and the receiver comes back and there's a PI called based on a bad throw. And the other one is when a defender like Trevor Woods was trying to do in this case, he was trying to go low, yeah. but the Air Force offensive player dropped his helmet and created that contact, yet Trevor Woods is ejected for targeting. I don't, I mean, the the rules for targeting are so confusing and they seem to change year to year. I don't yeah. know if that's the letter of the law targeting, but it shouldn't be. Yeah, and I, I don't know. Um, I should know this, but I, I don't know if there's some sort of review process they can go through this week, uh, look at that play again, and maybe Trevor doesn't have to sit out the first half, uh, and maybe a replay replay people look at it and say, you know what, that's that's not targeting the way we, we intend it to be. Maybe he can play next week. But, yeah, I agree with you. It's tough. And I remember a play several years ago against Washington State. Uh, I don't know who the player was on CU, but um, Gardner Minshew was doing the same thing. And, you know, he's running the ball, and the defender comes in, great tackle, but Minshew lowers his head. You know, head to head, and, and the player get, for CU gets ejected. So I don't like that call. Um, I think that was a tough one for CU. It didn't change the game, but um, you know that's tough when you lose. You'd already lost Isaiah Lewis to an injury. Then you lose Trevor Woods to that. Your two starting safeties are out. And you know, Fontenot. You know, some fans were were, were irritated that, that should have been targeting as well. Uh, that could have been. It looked like helmet to helmet on the goal line. Um, you know, there was so much with that play. I mean, I. Replay, it's hard to tell. I thought he was in, you know, but it looked like just briefly before the ball yeah. got loose that it was in. Uh, and I think had the initial call been a touchdown, I don't think they would have reversed it uh, clearly because I, I thought it was a touchdown. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think it's they kept it because of what the call was. And uh, that's one where I'm going to give CU some credit here in that they were down 20 to nothing in this football game. And even though they didn't play well, if that's called a touchdown for Fontenot, it's 20 to 17. And it's a whole different ball game at that point. And now maybe you silently gets fired up, and maybe you win the football game where it doesn't look so ugly. Uh, but when that gets called against them, they kind of folded at that point. I don't want to say folded; that sounds like a bad thing. But you know, Air Force took it from there. Um, but I think I give credit uh, to see you for some fight a little bit. I mean, they could have, you know, kind of tucked tails after it was twenty to nothing, but they fought back and uh, almost made it a game. Since that four and zero start during that abbreviated twenty twenty season, they're they're four and fourteen. And uh, four, four and twelve. Four and twelve. Yeah. yeah, four and eight last year. Yes, yes. Four, four and twelve. And you've got Minnesota coming up, who is? Uh, I, I know they haven't really played anybody yet, but they're not gonna play anybody next week. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. That's a bad. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Buff fans. <laughs> but hey, they, they they know they're seeing the same thing we're seeing, right? Yeah. Uh, Minnesota's outscored two opponents, hundred to ten. Uh, See, you can't score more than ten. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. It, it's tough to say Minnesota's going to get super challenged next week either. Yeah. And we'll be there. We'll continue to cover this football team. And, uh, you know, we can't wear the fan hat. We've got to try to stay unbiased. But it, it's been brutal trying to cover this football team uh, the last couple of years. Uh, I guess you just uh, keep going forward. And, and the fans, uh, I know that fans are super negative, and they should be right now. Yeah. I give credit to any CU fan that's still tuning in to watch this football team right now because uh, they deserve a lot better than what they're they're getting from their alma mater or the team that they support. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, and you know, I know a lot of CU fans travel. Have fun in Minneapolis next week, and uh, and hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe uh, CU can uh, fix some things this week and give them a game. You know, I, I know you and I would like to see it just because it's tough to cover a team that loses like this, and we don't want to see it every week. And yeah. you know, even though I said what I what I just said, you know, I I would like to see this team, you know, play better and give us something to write about, give us something to you know, and CU fans to be happy about. But you know, it, it's tough to be optimistic about that right now. All right, Buffaloes open the 2022 season with two disappointing losses.